Hey folks, today is Friday, June 9th, 2023. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week. As you can tell, I'm not in the usual place. I'm in a weird hotel room. I don't know who, I don't know who she is, but uh, I'm at Summer Game Fest. I'm checking out some games behind the scenes to hopefully talk about some cool stuff with you guys. But as of the time of making this video, uh, the big Summer Game Fest kickoff live stream went down. So we got to talk about some of the biggest surprises from it. Let's, let's start off with that. Look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments in terms of like how this event shook out. I know people like to rank them. I don't really care. I thought there weren't a ton of surprises, but there was some good stuff and we got a lot of gameplay. So let's just talk about some of the biggest things. Uh, one of the first things they kicked off that nobody saw coming was a new Prince of Persia game. It's like more of a like smaller scale type thing. It's still made by Ubisoft specifically, but this is Prince of Persia The Lost Crown. This is actually coming in January and essentially this is like a 2D action looking maybe even metroidvania style prince of persia game where you actually don't play as the prince but you play as this other badass looking guy and i gotta say i had kind of heard rumblings about this game and i wasn't sure how it was going to shake out with you not playing as the prince but seeing this trailer and seeing almost kind of like anime inspired action scenes and the way a lot of the action is framed it looks pretty cool. They also announced a new Sonic Superstars. This is like an all new Sonic game, a 2D classic style Sonic game, but with an incredibly new look to it. It's all 3D and beautiful with the characters with cool new designs. Uh, we got to see you play as Sonic, you play as Tails. There was a guy behind me in the crowd cheering, yeah, for every character. You get to play as Sonic, yeah, Tails, yeah, Knuckles, yeah. And then Amy, he lost his mind. So I'm sure Sonic fans are gonna be pretty happy with this. One of my personal most anticipated even though I'm not like the most hardcore Souls person, uh, Lies of P just looks so awesome. We got a new trailer. Uh, we also got a demo. There's a demo out now. We'll have to see what happens, but we now know that it has a release date of September 19th. Along with that, there's a game based on the manga Sandland, which I, I don't have any experience with, but the art, of course, is Akira Toriyama, so this looks absolutely incredible. You're like a little demon guy on a tank exploring and doing cool stuff. After the show, I was talking to somebody and they were explaining to me like the real setup up and everything and it sounds really cool and along with that definitely don't miss Witchfire. they showed new gameplay i've been looking forward to this one from the beginning this is like a almost kind of cool weird fantasy doom style game from the people who made painkiller this game is dropping in early access september 20th and also uh the big old final fantasy reveal final fantasy 7 rebirth got a big old gameplay trailer for it. This was intended to be like the showstopper, like the big surprise at the end. I, I you know, I, for Final Fantasy fans, it is good. I am excited. I actually thought they were gonna show off like Elden Ring DLC or something like that. But yeah, this is looking pretty sweet. Pretty much what we expected. But we actually know that it is coming early 2024 on PlayStation 5 and it's gonna be on two discs, which is really cool. I like that the marketing like said that because it just feels very, old school. Are they going to charge us more for it? We'll have to wait and see. Path of Exile 2 got some gameplay. This is actually the first time really seeing this since it was announced two years ago, and that looks pretty awesome. We also got to look at the man who erased his name. Uh, this is the new Yakuza game, once again, following Kiru, uh, my one of my favorite video game characters. And nice surprise, we actually know this is coming out in November. But speaking of nice big surprises, uh, something that caught me off guard was Spider-Man 2 showed up. Uh, we got to look at Venom, like an official like image of Venom and they've confirmed it's not an Eddie Brock Venom and we also got a release date. We knew it was coming this fall, but now we know it's coming October 20th. One cool thing is Saber Interactive and Focus uh, are making a game with John Carpenter. It's called John Carpenter's Toxic Commando. And it looks absolutely sweet, over the top, arcade style, zombie killing car stuff. I'm just about. Oh, and I forgot to mention, along with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, they also announced a new mobile game called Ever Crisis that looks pretty all over the place if you ask me in terms of like the story, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, this show did show a lot of like new free to play games and new free to play early access games and stuff. We don't have time to cover a lot of them, but we got to look at Throne and Liberty and Warhaven, uh, but then switching gears, Alan Wake 2 gameplay, and it seems pretty sweet. It was a short snippet, but survival horror gameplay is what I'm about. Hey, next up, this video is sponsored by Raycon. Now, if you haven't heard by now, these are the affordable, high quality earbuds that have been taking over the internet. Raycon puts the work in so that you can get good quality at half the price compared to other premium wireless audio brands. Maybe another more expensive pair you had broke, money's tight, or you're like me, you like having kind of like a backup. Personally, I wear these outside, and it's always good to know that I can just buy an 
another pair easily because they're affordable in case I like fall in a ditch or something. They sync up with Bluetooth with your phone, nice and easy. They have all the features you'd expect, smart features, multiple sound profiles, uh, the ability to take calls. I've said it before, but the handy dandy little carrying case is my favorite part. It's super small, it's got wireless charging, it fits right in your pocket, the battery life lasts a while. Uh, they fit in your ears and they don't fall out, which is huge. They come with a bunch of little gel tips for you to get the right fit. They're simple, dependable. That's the biggest thing. That's what I like about these types of things and they make a great gift. So if you wanna check out any of Raycon's products, they make it pretty easy. They have a happiness guarantee and a bunch of fun stuff. All you gotta do is click the link in the description down below or go to buyraycon.com slash game ranks for 15% off your Raycon purchase. Once again, that's buyraycon.com slash game ranks. And big thanks to Raycon for sponsoring our videos. And continuing on, uh, we got a new look at Pal World. This is Pokemon with guns, like straight up. We've talked about this game a lot on this channel, but it's nice to see it again after it going dark for a while and it's shaping up to still be very much what I wanted. Pokemon with guns. Like they legitimately look like Pokemon. They, they know what they're doing. But last but certainly not least, uh, one of the big things of the show was the official reveal of Mortal Kombat 1 gameplay. And I think it looks pretty damn incredible. I don't know about you guys, but this cameo system with characters jumping in to help and do attacks and build your combos is something that other fighting games have done before, but like I just like the way they were animated here. It's really cool to see cool new looks at characters like Johnny Cage, uh, Kenshi, one of my favorites. There was a lot going on in this trailer. Like they gave us the goods. They explained a little bit about how the cameo system works uh, and just essentially how this is kind of like a reboot of the franchise, but not just like an uninspired reboot. It's like they're trying and remixing and, and shaking things up and giving us new interpretations of these characters, which as a comic book fan, I'm, I'm always just into that. Like new looks at characters is cool. So this, this just makes sense. This one just feels right. Moving on over to some other news. Uh, definitely worth pointing out this tech that uh, went big like last week or so. It's a little bit older than a week, I apologize, but I saw it pop up in the news again and we figured it was worth talking about. This Nvidia tech that is essentially like artificial intelligence generated NPC dialogue. Now we've kind of known that this was going to be a thing with some developers playing around with it. And I get it in terms of it being like text dialogue uh, in, in some instances, but this is specifically NVIDIA ACE for games. These are virtual characters with generative AI behind them. So essentially ACE is tool sets that games will use to, in their words, deploy customized speech, conversation, and animation AI models in their games and stuff. And we get to see it in real time and it is something. It's definitely something. I know people are really excited about the prospects of this stuff. Uh, this seems kind of awkward, but uh, to quote other YouTuber, Philip DeFranco, uh, this is the worst it will be. It's always going to improve, so yeah. If it can make some small teams or some game makers lives easier or, or help them focus on other things, I understand it, but I also really just like characters that are written. They have writing behind them and they have cool voice actors doing voices for them. So we'll see where this goes, but the technology is developing rapidly, man. It's crazy. Uh, along with that, uh, Hideo Kojima and Kojima Productions announced a new documentary. This documentary is about him, Hideo Kojima. It is called Hideo Kojima Connecting Worlds and uh, it's apparently coming soon and I am very much into celebrating auteurs. I, I get it, I'm a Hideo Kojima fanboy, but this, knowing that it's, it's partially involved with his production company, does seem a little like pat on the back, self-congratulatory. Am I still gonna watch it? Yeah, definitely. But I don't know, it's just kind of funny. Maybe I'll make a documentary about myself. It'll be incredibly boring. But speaking of boring, what's definitely not boring is the day before discourse because the day before is back, baby. Uh, they did an interview, uh, the developers specifically did an interview and they dropped a new trailer, which is a weird trailer about a sports car driving through a post-apocalyptic city. Doesn't really tell me anything about the game. But in the interview, the developers answered some questions. It kind of all felt like marketing speak to me, but at the very least, the game is now officially coming to early access in November, November 10th specifically. So I guess we can all judge it for ourselves. We'll definitely be doing that there. We've talked about this game enough in the past with like, is it real? Is it half-assed? Is it as good as it sounds, you know? But thankfully, if this date holds, if it doesn't get delayed more, we get to see what the deal is. Cause like, I know a lot of people are waving it off, but like maybe it's because we're like the more hardcore news obsessed people. But like, this was like the top wish listed game on Steam. So like it, it, it's hit some point of bigger success and it's not even out. So really curious to see how this one shakes out. Also, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 lives. Uh, a lot of people were worried about this one, but the developers released a little blog 
update post saying that we're gonna get a bunch of big news in September. We also got some new screenshots and stuff, so good. Uh, I'm glad this game still exists. We need more vampire games, and especially after Redfall, we still we still need more vampire games. Oh, and uh, holy shit, uh, Pikmin 4, uh, we got a new trailer for it, and it's got a release date. It's coming in July. July 21st, 2023 is when you can finally play more Pikmin. If you're a Pikmin person, you've been, you've been waiting a really long time. Oh, and then let's talk Final Fantasy IX. There have been rumors popping up this week about a official Final Fantasy IX remake, uh, with sources from multiple websites saying that it is a thing, and it's coming at some point, but, don't get it twisted. There is something very cool to talk about here. Check this out, Final Fantasy IX Memoria Project. This is a fan remake from the ground up. It is incredibly ambitious and really awesome. They put out like a, a video of a gameplay demo, a lengthy amount of game. This is apparently over 50 developers and artists and fans just coming together and making this thing. I know some people don't want remakes. They're tired of remakes and want different things, but when fans come together and, and they put their heads together and some of them have some real smart and talent, uh, cool stuff happens, man. Unfortunately, it seems like we may never actually be able to play this because Square Enix is gonna crack down on them, but like, if you're a fan of Final Fantasy IX, I implore you to check out this video. It's gonna be linked in the description down below as well as everything else I talk about this week. But that is it for this week. There's a lot to go do, a lot of games to check out to hopefully report back to you guys. So definitely keep your eyes peeled for next Friday because I'll probably be talking about a lot of the stuff I played. I'm also gonna be talking about the stuff I play on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jake Baldino. But the biggest thing is I wanna hear from you guys in the comments what you think about this stuff. What was your favorite game reveal? Was it a new game or was it like an update on an existing game that we already knew about? Were you like me or at this point? Like, are you getting like old? Are you being an old gamer? I fall asleep during like the Fortnite and Warzone stuff, but like maybe you love it. Hey, you do you. Let's talk about any of the games announced down in the comments. Definitely want to hear from you. But if you like getting caught up on the news with us every Friday, and reminder, this show goes out a little earlier every week now, clicking the like button is all you got to do. It really helps us out. So thank you. But as always, I'm Jake Baldino. Thanks for watching. Pizza's on me.